the rent-seeking elites that are driving this system are as dumb as they appear. They are creating chaos on a planet they cannot leave. And the, there are a number of ways that that could play out, and I, I'll, I'll put two on the table, and uh, we can talk about what you see. One, there's a, a, a thread, I call it the collapse game, and the idea is, uh, I heard somebody say recently, um, we're not all in the same boat, we're all in the same storm. Some of us are in rowboats, some of us are in battleships. The storm affects us differently, but we're all in the same storm. But my concern is, evolutionarily, historically, over the span of history and prehistory, elites have faced the following truth, which is collapse hurts everybody, but it often hurts your competitors more than it hurts you. And so it can be net positive if collapse destroys your competitors and hurts you, but you inherit what your competitors had by virtue of it, you know, cleaning out the environment. If that's true in a general sense, it would cause people to detect when they are in that elite spot, hey, I'm better positioned than anybody else to deal with a collapse. And it would cause the elites who feel that they are in this position, to become reckless with respect to the things that would cause it, because the basic point is actually it's kind of a feature, not a bug. And in the present, that doesn't work, because the technologies on which we all depend and the interrelatedness of everything and the weaponry available to us, all of the things that are in play now function at a scale takes what used to be true, which is that collapse could serve those best positioned to withstand it, and means that maybe none of us withstand it. But you wouldn't expect the understanding of that. It would be a much more visceral willingness to gamble amongst people who were well positioned that might get us all into a situation we simply can't get out of. Right? That's one possibility, is that we're, be we're being, it's a ship of fools. And those fools are operating on out-of-date information about where, uh, where there is a future and where there is not. The other possibility is that um, they have understood exactly where they are and that the story you tell only plays out the way you say it does uh, if our energy demands remain the same and that a lot of the weird you know, failure to give a shit that they're killing people through bad pharma, the uh, deafness to um, the various... It, there's an awful lot of thinking that says the population needs to be lower, and we can argue about that. Um, mm -hmm. I know you and I probably, uh, while we detest the people saying these things and find their logic feeble also recognize that the Haber-Bosch process has jacked the population up with no exit plan. And so while um, it isn't clear what's supposed to happen, my hope is that uh, we get really wise really fast to discover fusion, uh, apply it correctly, um, and we make a sustainable planet uh, and, you know, pick a population level that can be maintained with everybody being free and well taken care of. But I also think that's unlikely. So there's a question about whether or not the people who have these discussions and used to talk about um, population have taken those plans to some other level that they're not sharing. And, you know, is that just a wild-eyed conspiracy uh, theory, or is there something to the idea that somebody is actually looking to address the problem by reducing the amount of energy we need um, by allowing the population to drop in some way? 
Well, the depopulation thing comes up a lot and I can't, um, I have a hard time dismissing it out of hand, Brett, because, uh, there's a lot of statements and as I said, we go back to the WF crowd and we're using them as a placeholder for these elites. And I believe that they're just the front men for this organization. I think the truly, truly elite people never show up on the Forbes 400 list, right? Yep. You know, it's just, that's, that's gauche. That's, that's Nouveau. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? You know? yeah. It's a rookie yeah. move. Yeah. <laughs> rookie yeah <laughs> that that's like a set first second generation kind of a thing wait till you've yep. been around 10 generations you know then you, you'll get it you'll work then this out right so yeah. then you'll know um but you know again back to that the the wf putting out that idea that by 2050 we need two and a half planets well we don't have two and a half planets so we have one right and then let's imagine as well that they have access to the same data i have maybe better probably better they actually know how much saudi arabia has or doesn't have left in its oil reserves they know and you, this is just a simple calculation. You go, okay, how does this work? Now, this is my, my seminal theory that I, I not theory, my, the way I look at the world is that we have an exponential money system. It works really well when it's growing exponentially. It's yes. great. You know, it doesn't go in reverse at all. It hates reverse. It just doesn't know how to manage reverse. Right. So uh, as long as our credit in the system is expanding by some percentage, eight, nine percent a year, it's reasonably happy. Um, the problem is, is that our income has been growing at less than half that rate. And these two things are compounding against each other, you know, f- away from each other. And we're at that asymptotic phase, like, like this, this like, uh oh, we're going like this. We're going like this before. We, we don't know what is going to happen when it levels out. But this is where we are. And it's really easy to reason through. So they talk about a great reset. Our monetary system is in the final throes of trying to desperately ignore something, which is completely obvious, which is that we've made way too many claims on the future that can't be met, right? So, so when people ask me, Chris, summarize all your financial theories in one, one sentence, I'll say, great, it's very simple. All we have to resolve is who's going to eat the losses. Uh-huh. And now we can put the players on the table. The bankers always like it not to be them. They've been very successful at getting bailed out you know, taking the obscene profits during the fat years and getting bailouts during the, the un, unfat years, right? The politicians don't want it to be them, right? And everybody's going to hope that the, the little people will be the patsies for this again, right? As we always are, we are Charlie Brown and they, they are Lucy holding the football time after time. The problem has been that this thing called the internet came along, Brett, and people are onto the scams now. Yeah. And so their job has to be fracturing us and keeping us away from each other so we can't organize into a a coalition that says, wait a minute, we'd like to have a seat at this table when we answer the question, who's going to eat the losses? I think that explains a lot of what we're seeing. Yeah, it unfortunately does. And we can rephrase some of what you've said in some very ugly ways that will rescue what I've said very clumsily here. There's a lot of food produced in this system to feed us. If a massive contraction is coming, that food can be reapportioned, and the people who are going to get it are the people with the power, whoever they might be. So in other words, it is a little bit like a version of living on a feedlot, but not understanding that you're not, you know, in the Garden of Eden. Um, Your resources will feed them if lean times come. Uh, Two other things. You talk about growth versus going in reverse. So uh, I've been hammering this particular note. Um, it's a long-standing thread for me, but I've been talking about it in public in light of the, the crisis <clears throat> in the Middle East because I think it is the perspective which allows us to understand what's actually in play. We are in a battle between what I call the West which is not a geographic description of anything. It is a set of values and a way of organizing a civilization that is superior to the ancestral way. It is superior in that it is fairer, it is safer, it is less violent, it is more productive, it is more liberating, it is more rewarding, it is better in every way. The one way in which we cannot make that argument is that it is fragile. It only works this version of the West only works under positive sum dynamics as the pie is expanding. It works mm-hmm. great because it doesn't make sense to bludgeon your neighbor 
and steal from them when there is wealth to be produced by collaborating with your neighbor. So we tend to do a good job of putting race aside, for example, and collaborating based on opportunity under growth circumstances. When you reverse the polarity and things contract, what we do is we, the system, the West, breaks down into the ancestral system, which I call lineage displacement games. And the idea is blood is thicker than water becomes the dominant arbiter of who you collaborate with. And we get very ugly tragedies of history as people get rid of other people and take their stuff. So <clears throat> that is the predicament. And my refrain is we have no choice going forward. The only way a planet this high tech integrated and well armed <coughs> can continue is if we stabilize the conditions that allow the West to flourish and globalize so that everybody gets to participate in that system. That's really the question. We either do that or I believe we will face one ugly end or another as a species.